over building a temperature controller so you have uh, temperature fermentation control um, currently what we're using is uh, a little bit larger than a standard dorm fridge um, we use better bottles but glass carboys or buckets fit nicely uh, take the freezer part of the the freezer part of the fridge and you put it along the side there's room for your blow off on the door um, does a really nice job we also run a uh, heat belt in New Hampshire the temperature can swing 40 50 degrees especially in my basement so I run both hot and cold off of the controller so this controller will control both heat and cold it's in C well, what I do is I have a uh, chart that tells me, you know, a cheat sheet that tells me what C is to F. It's very easy to set, and the whole thing is, uh, I can, you can put the whole thing together for about 40 bucks, which is pretty cheap. So, to get started, what you're going to need is go to Amazon or eBay, and you pick up one of these Chinese temperature controllers. It's uh, a model STC-1000. There's different makers. You want to make sure that the description says that it has... Uh, delay for um, fridge compressor. What that does is it doesn't allow the, the compressor to kick on. It won't call for the compressor to kick on. It has a delay for it so you don't blow your compressor out going on and off, on and off. Uh, some spare wire. Power cord. I'm using a switch power cord. You don't need to use a switch power cord. A good source of cords is like extra computer power cords. You just cut the ends off, strip them, and we're all set. Um, 4x4x2 four by four by job box. You don't need to get this fancy. You can do it with less, but these are pretty cheap. These are like five, six bucks over at Home Depot, and they do make a really nice finished product. You'll need some wire strippers, a screwdriver, some wire nuts. Again, I'm using some cord grips, and what that does is it allows you to um, pull on the cables and not pull it out of the box. Um, this goes into the box, as you'll see, and then this tightens down on the cord and prevents you from pulling pulling on the wires. Um, standard AC outlet. It'll also be helpful to have a Dremel tool if you're going to go with the job box route. Um, so those are all the parts you're going to need. Um, when you buy these controllers, it's a control. make sure you buy the 110 model. These come in 110 and 220. Now when I say 110, I'm talking about the input power. It'll say uh, 10 amps at 220 volts for the relays that control your both your heat and cold. That's fine. It's, it's, your, it's really the input power should be 110. Okay, so um, using a Dremel tool and a rotary bit, I marked using a uh, spare plastic outlet cover, I marked the holes for the plug, pulled it out. As you can see, it, it, it's not perfect, but it does fit. Also, what you're going to need to do to your plug is you're going to need to snap the... Um, aluminum ends off that would normally hold it to an outlet we're going to use this middle screw to hold it into the plug so it's these these tabs right here you're going to want to take them off take a pair of pliers work it back and forth and they'll snap right off easy uh, so that's the first side I've got to mark the other side directly opposite directly opposite it and cut the hole for the controller okay so as you can see I've now cut the hole in for the temperature controller in one end, the other end has the plug, and this is what the package looks like. Um, now we're going to move on to wiring. I've got to put a hole in for the power wires and a hole in for the sensor wire. Okay, so we moved upstairs to the table so I can sit down and wire this thing. And uh, what I've done is I've cut three white wires, approximately five or six inches long. Strip one end a little bit longer than the other. Um, the long end, we're going to wire nut to the incoming uh, common wire from the plug. Um, and then um, I've got five red wires. If you have black, that would be more appropriate probably. Um, but I, ha I happen to have red, so that's what I'm using. Now the plug, a little prep on the plug. Uh, most plugs uh, have a copper side and a white side. The white side takes the white wire. Uh, the, the copper side takes the the uh, black wire or red in our case. Um, this is a ground lug. We're going to use that. We'll, we'll, we'll attach the green ground wire coming in to that. Uh, also, what we're going to want to do is uh, we're going to want to, 
if you can see right here, um, these are set up. These are set up. There's a little bar right here. And what that does is it allows you to wire one side of the outlet and the other side goes for the ride. Um, so we're going to break that because what we're going to do is we're going to have one side is going to be on when the hot is on and one side is going to be on when the cold is on. So to break that, all right, so I want to use dike. You just work that back and forth with a pair of cutters. And you can see I have it in my hand and the bar, the bar is now gone, essentially separating this side from that side. Do the other side. There we go. You can see I've broken that side. So, all right, so I'm gonna prep this plug. Okay, so you can see I've got my plug installed. I've colored one side of the outlet red. I usually do red and blue, um, I, but I, don't, I can't find the blue marker. So I colored one side of the outlet red just so I know which side it's getting heat. Um, if you look at your controller, right on the back of the controller, I don't know if you can see it here, it gives you instructions on how to wire it. And power, power goes in, and those correspond to these plugs on the bottom here. So power, sensor, hot side relay, cold side relay. All right, so um, I've got my white wires coming out of the plug, um, my red, which is actually my black, my hot wire. I'm going to start by connecting another white wire to the incoming. Um, it's going to go from this to this, and it's basically going to power the uh, controller. So I'm going to use a screwdriver, loosen up the right hand screw on the power side. Right out, easier to get at. Use the, and I strip this end a little bit on the small side. Um, you don't need a whole lot of wire sticking out. Stick that in there. down tight. Give it a tug to make sure that's in there. That's good. Nice and tight. Okay, while well, I've got that, I'm going to hook another the red wire with a small stripped end into the left hand side of the power. That's good. Okay, so now um, what the next step is to um, I'm going to wire up the hot side of the outlet to uh, one side of the relay, and I'm going to go to the left hand side of the relay. So this is my hot plug. So I'm going to go to the heating heating side. There's not a lot of room, uh, but I like this box, the size of this box, because um, it's really really small and compact. Um, but what, what it does is it makes it a little bit of a bitch for this next step, but once you're done, you're done. So I'm not terribly worried about it. So put that in there a little bit. You don't want to have your wires like, oh, too much longer than this because when it's all done, you got to be able to put the cover on and get all these wires in. So, um, so hot, hot side, heating side goes into the heating relay. Cold side goes to the left hand side of the cold side relay. Yeah, I don't think it matters what side, but I always do left on this step, so. Alright, so that's that is done. Now all I have left to do is to go attach the last two wires to the other side of the relay on the controller. At this point, don't worry about what side. What side is hot or cold, because it isn't going to matter. Too much coffee this morning. I'm shaking. Okay.
Okay, so we are almost done. Uh, right before off camera, I, I uh, attached this green wire to the green lug uh, grounding the plug. So now uh, we're going to close the sensor up. Now the sensor has two wires on it. It doesn't matter uh, which, which side goes where. Uh, and that just make sure you get it in the sensor. that in there while I tighten down on it. Oh, I got it that time. A tug. Fine little wire getting in there. Okay. I got it that time. Alright, so I got that. So now all we have to do is connect the whites and the reds and the blacks. So, so let's do the whites. I'm going to tape each color of tape means something. I happen to have yellow. So that's what I'm going to use. I just want to wrap it so the wire nut doesn't twist itself loose. Okay. Last step. Right. Probably be sure to get the power wire actually in there. These wire nuts might actually be a little small for the task, but it's working. Right, that's good. Okay, now, these plates that came with the unit um, snap on the sides and slide up. They're actually to hold the, the controller in place. I'm going to push the controller in all the way. Snap the plates on the sides. And maybe I'll do that before I slide it in all the way. This part here you can see it's a little springy that goes towards the wall that you're snapping it in against. Right, so now I'll slide it in all the way. These plates will just hold it in place. Do I have it in straight here? Now. Cover on. Okay, so we've plugged our unit in. It's it's on this temperature that it's displaying right here is the temperature that it's reading on the sensor. It's 20.7, which is about 70, a little over 70 degrees, but you definitely want to make yourself a cheat sheet. This right here, what I do is I tape this right to the side of carboy and then I put put a little bubble wrap over the top of it and that keeps it insulated. These controllers only read Celsius, so you'll need a cheat sheet unless you know Celsius. Um, the instructions, pretty simple. Uh, basically you have uh, four different options. Your F1 is your temperature set value. Two is your differential uh, set value. So in other words, how much off the set point does it have to go before it trips? So default's 0.5 C, which is about a degree Fahrenheit. And that's what I leave mine set to. You can adjust that to even less if you want. And go down as low as 0.3 C. Uh, compressor delay time, that's important. If your compressor um, was running, then shuts down, and then 30 seconds later calls for, for it again, it turns back on, um, it can be really detrimental to the compressor, and it can wear out a compressor and blow your fridge a lot sooner than um, need be. So there's a delay time there of three minutes on the cooling side. 
Um, I usually change it to five, um, give it a little extra time. You know, brewing beer, you're not worried about every second on the, when it kicks on. Uh, and then the temperature calibration value, I don't worry about that, but you can calibrate it. You can get you can get boiling water or ice cold water, and you can calibrate your sensor, drop, drop your sensor in it, and you should know what it reads. Um, so with that said, uh, right now it's calling for heat on the heat side. Grab a meter. Set it to AC. See, it's 120 volts. And there's some voltage leakage onto this side. Uh, it's only showing three volts. That isn't gonna be enough to do anything. Um, so now I will change the temperature. Now to change the temperature on these, what you have to do is you have to hold the S button, get you into the program mode. And if you wanna go through the different options, you hit the up arrow, F2, F3, F4, F1. Then hold down the S. And I want to get it to cool. So let's see. I want to change the number so it's lower. Hold down the S and turn, change the number. Go down to 15. It's lower than the set. And then when you want to make the change happen, you hit the power button. So now you can see that it's calling for cooling. Since it's been already five minutes since it's kicked on, it kicks on immediately. You can see it's 120 volts there. And one volt there. So that's it. Pretty much you just got to screw the cover down and it's a done deal. So that's all there is to making a controller. It does hot and cold controls. Um, you can keep your beer within a degree. Uh, a degree plus or minus. Basically, when you brew your beer, if it's a little too warm, you can put it in the fridge, you can cool it down, you can pitch your yeast, you can ramp it up, you can do a lot of different things. Um, put the whole thing together conservatively well under 40 bucks. Um, kind of hard to beat. I would, uh, anybody that hasn't done this, it's really easy. I would go ahead and do it. So that's it. Um, I'm Darren and I'm out. I hope you're drinking something good.